Well, hello there. Oh, sorry. Uh, I say sorry to you guys because that voice gets on my wife's nerves. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, it just does. Uh, anyway, here we are. It's, uh, it's Friday. It's uh, the end of the week. It's the end of the chapter. Oh, my goodness. 8.3.3 is the last lesson in Chapter 8. Are you kidding me? How did we get through that so fast? Okay. Anyway, uh, we have uh, Jean-Francois Millet. Millet uh, is my uh, student of the month today, <laughs> or student of the homework today. Uh, he's famous for uh, uh, painting this painting as well as some others, La, La Angelis. Um, and it's a pretty cool 18th century painting that I got to see in the Museum d'Orsay, old train station turned into a museum in Paris. My first year I was ever teaching, I got to go there for Christmas break. Okay, very cool. Anyway, it's one of my favorite paintings. We actually bought a print, have it at home. Uh, check it out. Okay, and the reason I have a painter for my uh, my name is the first problem is about painting. Okay, not quite artistic painting, but painting classrooms at Walt Clark Middle School. Okay. Uh, the uh, head custodian, uh, Mr. Banesh, he's in charge, and he figured out that it would take about five hours for one person to paint one classroom. He needs to paint all 36 classrooms at the school over summer break. Okay, so we have to answer some questions about this. Okay, and the first question has to do with, um, if you look at A, um, uh, how many total hours would it take for one person to paint all the classrooms? So if you have one person working, we know that one person takes five hours to paint a classroom. Okay. Um, so basically, if you have uh, hours and rooms, okay, it's five hours per one room. And the question is... How long would it take to paint all of the classrooms? So let's keep our ratio. We're talking about the room still. Now, instead of one, we have 36 rooms. And what we're looking for is how long it would take or the hours. So this becomes what we call our proportion. We use the rate of five hours per room to create this proportion. And again, I wrote the words hours on top and rooms on the bottom first so I can keep it straight because now I know it's 36 rooms. And if I put 36 up here, it would line up with the hours and say, whoa, I made a mistake. It, it takes an extra five seconds to do that. But these questions can get confusing, right? So this helps me um, uh, keep from getting too confused or fix the mistake I make when I do get confused. I definitely recommend doing that. Okay. Now, remember, once we have a proportion, to solve it, we have three numbers and something we're looking for. We have the five hours per one classroom. We want to know how, how many hours for 36 classrooms. That's our proportion. And one way to solve this is to cross multiply. So I can say H times one, hours times one, equals five times 36. And so H times one is just H. So the number of hours it takes to paint all 36 is just 36 times five. And it kind of makes sense. 36 classrooms, five hours for each one is going to get the total hours. Okay, so you're going to go figure that out. And remember, you're going to put your box around your answer and a box around all the work we did for that problem. Okay, it's a good, good habit to start getting, establishing the habit. Uh, question B says, Mr. Banesh has a team of four workers he's planning to assign the job. Assuming they all paint at the same rate of five hours per classroom, how many hours would it take the team to do the painting? Now, <coughs> for this question, um, now I have four workers. So if I only had one worker and it took five hours for one classroom, each of those workers is going to take five hours but now we're going to have four classrooms done. Okay, so now my ratio, if we keep the same 
five hours for one classroom. Since there's four workers, each of them takes five hours. Now we have four rooms painted. Does that make sense? Okay. Now there's four rooms painted. The question is, um, how many hours? Again, we're looking for the hours. So I'm going to put that H there. Would it take uh, this time to paint all of the uh, the classrooms? Okay, so we still have 36 classrooms, but this is our new proportion. Now we're looking at five hours for four classrooms. How many hours for 36? And again, you can cross multiply. And this time you have H times four equals five times 36. Now you already did that, so come take your answer here. Okay, now the other way after you've done that, right, you're going to have H times four equals, I'm not going to do the answer for you. I'm going to have you figure it out, right? I, I want to get the H by itself. Remember what we do. We have to do the opposite, right, of that times four. And the opposite of times four, the inverse operation is divide by four. And don't forget, if I, you want to keep your equation in perfect balance, because that's what that equal sign represents, a perfect balance, you have to take whatever's on this side and also divide it by four. Okay? Okay. Now these will cancel out. You'll have H equals this answer, five times 36 divided by four. Now I do want to show you there's one more way of doing this, right? If five is to four, remember our proportions, one thing we can do, sometimes there is a shortcut. Okay. And that has to do with treating it, your ratios like equivalent fractions. And uh, that works when the smaller denominator fits in the big one. And that fits, right? So what did I do to the four to make it 36? And then do the same thing with the five. And that answer should be the same as the answer you get here. Don't forget to put a box around your answer and your box around your problem. Okay. All right. On to the next one. See, Mr. Banesh realized that he needs to have that painting done in nine hours. Yikes. So that a different team could come in and wax all the floors. I hope he's not waxing my floor because my floor is carpet. That'd be silly, huh? Okay. Um, so how many people would he need to assign to do the painting in order to do this? Now, remember what our question was on the first one. Okay. They're saying how many hours would it take total for one person. Okay. Right. So we had one person equaled these total hours. Right. And now we're trying to figure out. So I'm going to put this one and I'm going to say, get this answer here. Right. All right. One is this many hours. And we're saying how many people, this time it's a person on top and total hours on the bottom. And now we're saying how many people would it take uh, to do um, all of this? Okay. So uh, this time uh, we're, we're going to take this uh, but we're going to change this ratio over here to the number of hours we have to have it done by. And so now it's nine total hours, right? Okay. And we don't know how many people. So we're going to set this up. One is two, right? And then that's that answer coming down over here. Like, let's do P for people or painters is to nine. Okay. And you're going to have, this is a number. You're going to have th <coughs> three numbers and one variable. That you're, which one? Sorry about that. Uh, something stuck in my throat. I actually had to press pause on the <coughs> record. So again, real quick, this number is coming down from your answer in A, right? Which is five times 36. You can have it down here. 
<clears throat> and now you have one person is to this many hours it would take total. And we want to find out how many people if it's nine hours. So you can go do your cross multiply, right? And uh, and then solve for P, okay? That's a, I know that's a little bit of a stretch, but I think most of you can do it. I challenge you. See if you can figure it out. Again, this number's coming down here. You're going to have three numbers, one letter, okay? Okay, good luck on that one. Let's flip the page. That's probably the hardest problem here. This next set is it's all about, hey, <clears throat> do you know what country you live in? You live in the United States because you still use inches and feet. How many inches are in a foot? There are 12 inches in a foot. Okay. You got to know that. How many uh, minutes are in an hour? 60 minutes equals one hour. <clears throat> How many hours in a day? Hopefully, you know, 24 hours equals one day. Now, if you know that, these are just conversion problems. Okay. And you're going to take your uh, A, it just says how many inches are in six feet. Okay. So you're going to take six and each of those is how many inches? That's 12. That's all you got to do. Okay. And you're going to write your answer. I'd like for you to write inches equals six feet, okay? And the reason is, it's good to have both those things together. It gets you a better idea, um, what they call number sense, you know, about how many inches is six feet. You know exactly, and you have those things together, you see them together, they start sticking together, they belong together in your mind, okay? Here we are, uh, B, how many inches are five feet, two inches? Okay, so now you have to go 5 times 12 plus 2 equals the total inches. Okay, how about on C? How many minutes are in 7.5 hours? What do you think you're going to do there? Well, again, you can set it up as a ratio. There's 60 minutes in one hour. So how many minutes are going to be in 7.5 hours? And you cross multiply, right? So it'd be 7.5 times 60, right? Because m times 1 is m, right? So go ahead and figure that out if you want. And that's good to know how to set up that proportion because some things, sometimes it gets confusing. All right. How many hours in two days? I'm going to have you figure that out equals how many hours. But again, you can set up your ratio, make up a portion if you want. Last one, how many days? Are in 3,168 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some math in that one. See if you can figure that one out. 818. You have a triangle, okay, and the base is 13 centimeters. We don't know what the height is, but I know the area of a triangle equals one half times the base times the height, okay? And they're telling me that the area of this triangle is 100.75. And that equals one half times 13. I'm going to put those together and do it first. Okay. Times the height. Okay. So what's one half of 13? It's six and a half. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this because I like the letter on this side. So if this equals this, then this equals this, right? So I'm writing H, the height, equals one half of 13 is 6.5. And what do you have to do here? Well, you want to solve for H. You have to get rid of it times 6.5. And if I do it to this side by dividing it, I got to do it to that side. Okay. Go ahead and have at that. And then we have four more equations that we're going to try to solve. Sorry, three more. Two-thirds 
x plus 8 ninths. And actually, we're not uh, solving equations. We're evaluating expressions. So all we're going to do on these is what we call substitute. Pretend you're a soccer coach. Okay? And they're saying x equals 10. Okay? So I'm going to go 2 thirds times 10 plus 8 ninths. All I got to do, do the math. On B, we're saying what's 1 half times x minus 41, 1 half times 10, and minus 41. Okay? And the last one, you have x plus x plus 3 fourths x plus 22. Okay, so that's 1, 2x, and 3 fourths x. So 2 and 3 fourths times x equals 22. How do I get rid of that times 2 and 3 fourths? I'm going to do a divided by 2 and 3 fourths. And if I do it to this side, I better do it same thing to the other side. Write that division simple a little bit clearer for you. And don't forget to smell my feet when you do that. And then 8-20. Okay, I want to move this over here so you can see. Remember, that's a checkpoint problem. Okay? And if you read this, this, this problem is a checkpoint for division of fractions decimal. It will be referred to as checkpoint 8B without using a calculator to solve this, okay? Now, if you keep reading, it says check your answers by referring to the checkpoint 8B materials located in the back of your book, okay? So we're on page 422 here, okay? And if we go back to checkpoint 8B in the back of the book, It is on page 497, okay? They have the answers to those problems, but not just that, they show you how to do those problems, okay? They show you how to do them. So I'm going to, okay, and again, every, every, every step, okay? I'm going to let you do that, but go check on page 498 when you get done. Check your answers and see how they solved them, okay? You don't have to watch the video for this. This is a good kind of like a practice test for you, okay? And you're going to go try to do it yourself. And I'm writing in book page 495, 496. And I'm going to let you guys try that, okay? But I challenge you, pre pretend it's a test, test yourself, then go check the answers and see how you would have done. And if you didn't ace it, then you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I'm going to get some more practice on these or maybe ask my teacher for some help on these before I take the test, all right? Remember, you want your, uh, you want your homework to, to be a good... Uh, you know, checking in with the doctor kind of thing. Uh, you want to see the doctor, not the uh, medical examiner, right? Okay, you like checkups, not uh, autopsies, is what we say. All right, have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. Hope this goes well. Don't forget to use those offices.